Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. No matter what time you're tuned in to this video, today is day 22. As it relates to this VIP section, this VIP area, like we told you, it's bigger than just credit. We want to take you on a process so you can get overall personal financial success. So in the past days, you've learned about how to access all of the credit tools you need. You've learned how you can go about earning an additional stream of income if you so choose, if you want to empower others or empower yourself. Yesterday, we dove in deep on the eight steps to financial freedom in the format known as the personal cash flow plan, also known as the PCP. Now, what goes hand in hand with the PCP is the ability to develop a strategy, and that's what today will be about. So you got the one and only yours truly, Mr. And Mrs. Smith, Smith, your instructors once again, as we do so well. But let's talk about the strategy. We want to go to a tool that's known as the cash flow strategies. You hear us use the word strategy just about every day in every video, but let's go ahead and bring it full circle and you'll see exactly how and why it goes hand in hand with the PCP that we exposed to you on yesterday's video. So what I did was on the home page, all I did was scroll down and click on tools. Once you go to the tools, it brings up a certain amount of tools, but the one we're gonna be focusing on today is the cash flow strategies. All right, you guys, so in the PCP yesterday, um, around step number four is actually when it told you to set up your My Econ Debt Elimination Plan, all right? This is the plan that it was talking about. So we understand that you may not be ready to do that today. You may not be ready to set up your debt elimination plan next week, right? Because there were three other steps in the PCP that you had to knock out first. But what we want to do is just educate you, show you everything that you have access to. And again, what we're really showing you, you guys, is why you want to keep your membership going. This isn't just something that you do for 30 or 60 days. Will you be financially free in 30 to 60 days? If the answer is no, that's every reason for you to keep your membership, all right? So let's get started. What we're going to do, as you can see, we've already had our cash flow strategy set up, but what we're going to do just for your sake is we're going to show you how to set up a brand new one as if you were a new member setting this up for the first time, which most of you are. So if you're looking up here at the top, it says to create a new cash flow strategy, click no. And you already got it pulled up, right? No, click. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and dive in. The very first thing that it's going to ask you is the file name. Now, it's already going to have a timestamp with the date on it, but you can basically name this whatever you want. You can name this um, My Financial Freedom Game Plan. You can name this It's Time to Pay Off That Mortgage, if that's the only thing that you have. You can name this, you know, Angela's debt elimination plan, whatever you want, you can name it, you know, however you want. And like I said, the timestamp that you first set this up will automatically be saved. So because we're going through this, you'll see the timestamp for today's date, all right? The very first thing that it tells you to list are your top five financial goals. What you want to do is list these in the order in which you want to accomplish them. You want to place a number one through five in the boxes below. Look at some of the goals. Increase my income, reduce my taxes, buy a new home, make a major purchase, car, furniture, boat, pay off all debts, pay off all debts excluding my mortgage, save for college education, build retirement assets, retirement freedom goal, or other. For some people, it could just be traveling. Some people just want to take a good trip. They've been so buried down in debt. They haven't been able to live life. They eventually, once they get their finances at a place that they're comfortable and that they're actually satisfied, they may want to take a trip. So you're going to number this in the order in which you want to accomplish it. Absolutely. The top five. So that way, you know, you have a, a roadmap based on what you want to do. We could plug some numbers in, but we want you to customize it for you. And in order to make this video not too lengthy, I'm going to break this up in three parts. I meant to say that earlier. You see that there's an A, B, and a C. So this is the A section, and this will be one video, and then we'll separate B and C. So let's scroll now. After you've already listed your top five goals, remember, this is strategic. Now we need to know what is your retirement 
freedom goal. You see, this is what you got to understand first and foremost. Retirement is not based on age. It's based on money. So once you understand that, then you understand that you don't have to wait until you're 70 in order to retire. You don't have to wait until you're 65. You don't have to wait until you're 60. You can set up a roadmap or a game plan in order to accomplish that soon, and you walk out of the doors from your employment at the age of 50, 48, 40, whatever it is that you want to do because retirement is based on money, not so much age. So let's talk about it. Number one, what's the least amount of monthly income you desire at retirement? Whatever that number is. You see, a lot of people say when they want to be financially free, they automatically jump to being a millionaire. But in our actuality, when a person is working a job for 30 years, they're typically working their job to secure some type of cash flow or income to be coming in after they retire. In many cases, that might just be $4,000 a month, $5,000 a month, $6,000 a month, $8,000 a month, whatever their number is and they're secure and comfortable with living at that amount. It doesn't matter. If that's you, choose a number that best fits you. So what's the least amount of monthly income you desire at retirement? Now, we will give a recommendation. It should be a little bit higher than what you're currently earning at your job because prices tend to go up, taxes tend to go up, and you should want more on a monthly basis than you're currently receiving. But place that number in there, whatever it is for you. Number two. What year at the latest do you plan to retire? That's what I said. It's not based on age. So if you want to retire at a certain age, you lock in whatever that year is. Number three, how much of your monthly retirement income do you expect to receive from Social Security and company paid pension plans? Not what you will receive from 401k, 403b, your IRAs, CDs, etc. This is directly from the Social Security. If you pay into Social Security, how much do you expect to receive? Put that number there. If you are in a job that allows for pension, and you have a set number that you think you might receive, put that number there. If you don't know, then leave it blank, and we'll base it off of everything else. Number four, what is the appropriate value of your investment portfolio now? So if you have a mutual fund, 401k, the IRA that we discussed, et cetera, exclude company paid pensions and Social Security. You see, these complement one another. The first one was based on Social Security and pensions. This one is based on everything else, the investments that you created for yourself to position yourself for early retirement. So they go hand in hand without conflict. Number five, how much money do you currently invest monthly in long-term savings? So if you're investing in any of the things listed in number four, they want to know how much are you putting towards monthly? Is it $200 a month? Is it $100 a month? Is it $500 a month? Whatever it is, how much are you doing monthly? So we at least know where you are. Number six, how much additional money Monthly, can you invest into long-term savings? Now, so if you're doing 200 but you know you can stretch it up to 300 or 400 then say, okay, I'm doing 200 now, but I can do an extra 100 or extra 200 You put that number in there because what we want to do is help you hit your goals as fast as possible using straight strategic calculators and formulas that work for you as long as you work for it. So the, un the more honest you are, with the numbers you put in, the more honest the answer and the roadmap will be for you. Number seven, how much money do you have set aside for emergencies? You need at least six months of living expenses. That was a part of the cash flow strategy or the a PCP, the personal cash flow plan. That is where we told you that, look, you want to develop your $3,000 emergency fund and you want to have a six-month worth of living expenses. So this goes directly with that. Number eight. Do you feel you currently have a plan in place to accomplish your retirement goal in your desired time frame? For many people, the answer is no. But by the end of this, you will have a plan, and that's what this is all about, you developing the plan. So don't feel bad if you don't currently have a plan. We're helping you develop one step by step. Yes, most definitely, you guys. So for a lot of people, when they go through those eight questions, then you know that's when reality really sets in for them. They thought that they had it together, and that's okay, you know, but you just realize you don't quite have it together, especially if you don't have an emergency fund, especially if you're not investing, especially if you still have debt, especially if you don't know how you're going to be taken care of during retirement. But again, we got you covered because my econ not only gives you this game plan, they give you all of the tools that you need in order to get on the right track. If you're not investing, we teach you that. If you're not debt free, we're teaching you that. If you don't have good credit, we're teaching you that. So everything is covered 
under your membership. You just got to stick with it, all right? So part number three on this first page is the debt elimination, okay? So it asks you your creditor, your balance owed, and the minimum payment. And then right underneath that, part number four, I'm just going to run those two together. Number four is your recurring monthly expenses. Now, I promise you I'm not saying this to make anybody feel slow or anything like that, but I get this question often. Under the debt elimination, understand that those are things that can be paid off, okay? So this is where you will put your car note, your credit card, your mortgage, okay? Things that can eventually at some point in life be paid off, your student loans. But then under the recurring monthly expenses, is exactly as it sounds. They recur every single month. They never end. That's your cell phone bill, your utilities. If you're paying rent, you will put your rent here. You see what I'm saying? Rent goes in the monthly expenses. Your mortgage goes under the debt elimination. This would be um, uh, if you had cable or something like that. Of course, at some point, you can cut that off. But if you keep it, it's recurring every single month. So that's the difference in the two. So you want to make sure you go in here, and I'll just um, give a quick example on this one. So you'll do Visa. You'll do that your balance owed is $10,000, and then your minimum payment is $150 per month. Okay, so that's an example on how that looks. To add a new debt, you simply hit add, and guess what? It pulls up another line for you. So you're going to do that for every single debt. And then under the recurring monthly expenses, I put, you know, I stated the example of a cell phone, so I'm going to put that in there. Cell phone. And let's say monthly you're paying $150 on that. Now right here it says new monthly cost. What is a new monthly cost? Well, guys. A part of increasing your cash flow is seeing if you can lower your expenses. What we want you to do is call AT&T, call Verizon, call Straight Talk or whoever your cell phone service is with and see what it will take to get that bill lower, whether they have to lower your plan, whether you have a phone on there that you're not uh, using that you want to disconnect, whatever the case may be. If you can get that bill lowered, you're going to come in here under new monthly costs and you're going to put that in there. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm just going to put $120 in here. And look at what happens. It gives you your monthly savings. So now that you're saving $30 per month, guess what? You're going to use that $30, do what we taught you in the PCP from yesterday, and start on that $3,000 emergency fund, all right? $30 a month can add up, all right? So start stashing that in your emergency fund because you never know when you're going to need it. And then the same thing, to add another expense, you're simply going to hit add, and it's going to bring up another line. You're going to probably do a lot of adding right here. Uh, if you think about all of your monthly bills, like I said, your cell phone, your rent, your utilities, your cable, everything that you're paying monthly on, you're going to keep hitting add. And again, call every single one of these companies and see what it is that you can do to lower your expenses. I always give this example. Um, I actually introduced somebody to this business, and she was so serious about getting on the right track financially. She was renting at the time, but her kids had all moved out. She had a two- or three-bedroom that she didn't need. She literally moved apartments, okay, in order to increase her cash flow. She found a better apartment for cheaper, and it saved her hundreds of dollars a month. Think about what she did with that money. You can really get on the right track just by freeing up your cash flow. I love it. And this is part one of a three-part series. So what we're going to do is see you on the next video. Hopefully this made sense, but it all will make even more sense once you decide to put your numbers in there specific to your scenario. So in part two, we'll dive in a little bit deeper and show you what it looks like after you put in these numbers, and then we'll give you a part three that gives you the full spread of what you need to do in order to retire how you deem necessary. Yes. Now, one more thing. Let me add this. At the bottom, you guys, it says save, 
save and return to list, or cancel. You always want to hit save and return to list. Now this is what he was talking about. Now you see an A, a B, and a C. We just did A. Tomorrow we're going to do B, and the next day we're going to do C. So stay tuned, and we're going to show you exactly how this thing works so that you can get on the right track financially. Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Signing out.